This week, we're bringing together the 49 managers of the world's most beloved and treasured ocean icons. And the reason why we're bringing all of these managers together here in the Galapagos is because we started to realize at UNESCO, when we started to look across those 49 treasures, that collectively, these sites have hundreds of thousands of hours of practice in protecting flagship marine protected areas. For nearly every single problem, conservation challenge they face, someone else in the World Heritage family has already tried to solve it before them. And they can save each other years by just sharing what works and what doesn't. So that's why we felt at UNESCO that we should bring those managers together in one place so they can together navigate a more sustainable future for marine world heritage. Well, good morning, I'm Pedro Ramos. I'm the superintendent for Everglades and Dry Tortugas National Parks. We are this morning on Gardner Bay, a beautiful, beautiful beach. It is amazing to be here with all of the other uh, marine World Heritage Site managers. Just listening about what's happening at their own places, I get hope from the future simply by being here, interacting and sharing and learning from other managers like myself that are dedicated and committed together with their teams and their agencies and their governments to protect and make sure that the most special places that we have on the planet are preserved for generations way, way ahead in the future. I'm Helmi, I come from Komodo National Park. First, in 1991, they have become World Heritage. It means the dragon has become iconic. And then the second, in 1987, they are World Biosphere Reserve. Man and human and nature become harmonized. How are we put together on the, the same media through the national park? It's either how different thing on every continent and every island. And then with the difference, it means we are together. How to protect for good to the future? They start from the communication among us. It is exactly that what unites us. That could make us that could make us really strong and could get the job done. And I think the only way really to tap into the power of this network is by bringing you together and chart that future together. What I would uh, dearly love to walk away from is having a coalition of sites that have similar issues that we can then work together to generate a brand that uh, leverages the World Heritage values uh, to ensure or increase the sustainability of ship visitation at all the sites. My name is Scott Gendy, and I represent Glacier Bay National Park. We're currently on Espanola Island, and we had meetings in the morning 
and then we're taking the late afternoon to explore the sites and uh, see the wonders of the Galapagos. One of the things we're doing in Glacier Bay that may be of assistance at other sites or applicable at other sites is we're using some market-driven uh, means by which companies can compete uh, to provide for visitation services. Hello, I'm Annette Beck. I work at the Natural Heritage Services in Finland. UNESCO is an important cooperation organization. It's very important for linking us together to create cooperation. I think without UNESCO as the linking part, probably we wouldn't find each other as good as now. And I think if the managers are enthusiastic and believe that we can make a change, then we can also get everybody to understand how amazing these sites are and how important they are for our future. I'm uh, Arling Oppheim. I'm uh, representing uh, West Norwegian Fjords. One of the most, uh, most important things to uh, attend to this conference is that build a network and through the network uh, share experiences. I think uh, what we can share from the West Norwegian Fjords is how we work with the local communities to both take care of the status but, but also see the possibilities in using the status as a source of uh, sustainable uh, development. My name is Abdul Jamil Muhammad. I represent the Socotra Archipelago, Yemen. This meeting is very, very important, very crucial for us in order to exchange experience. You know, all managers of World Heritage, Marine World Heritage sites from all over the world, they gather here to exchange experience. Well, actually, good practice, we are trying to revive all traditional practices. Because in Socotra, since 1990, people I mean, used to live in harmony with nature. But after that, unfortunately, breaking down of those traditional practices have uh, negative impacts on the environment. So we try to revive those traditional things. We almost share the same threats, invasive species and sustainable tourism, you know, and sustainable uh, infrastructure development, uh, over harvesting of uh, resources. So we would love, we are here almost from uh, 46 World Heritage Sites. It's a lovely thing, you know. Wouldn't it be great if all the World Heritage Site could say all our energy to manage the site is managed non-CO2 based? Wouldn't that be wonderful, Fanny? I think collectively we have the opportunity to join with others to really become also the, the pioneers, the champions of ocean observing at your sites. I think you have the infrastructure, you have cloud, people want to work with you, scientists will be happy to work with you. I think you can do that, and it'll be a very exciting addition to the World Heritage Site. You don't have to necessarily... You just, you just choose. choose.
Hi, I'm Angelique Songko. I am the Protected Area Superintendent of the Tubataha Reefs Natural Park and World Heritage Site in the Philippines. For our part of the world, our enforcement has been known to be really good. We are also uh, succeeding in ensuring that the biological diversity of our site is protected. And so our fish biomass and our coral cover is increasing and we're happy about that. Our park hosts the most number of seabirds in the Philippines where they stay are now being eroded because of the of the storms and the and the wave action we are having a good number of young people who are becoming more and more interested in the environment and so there's hope because there's a new generation coming in there with new science My name is Ciro Arones, and uh, I represent the, the Phoenix Island Protected Area. Well, as I, as I understand, we are on Florian Island, and we are just uh, taking a tour to see some of the landmarks on the island. Huh? This is my first time to join this kind of meeting. It's provide uh, an opportunity to network with our site managers, uh, where they share the experiences and how they m manage the site and the lessons they've learned. We understand that the project has been conducted on invasive species uh, eradication, like rats and whatever, and I think those are uh, a similar problem that we have in our uh, site. Maybe we want to, to, to learn more. How can we apply those practical solutions to, to eradicate the, the invasive species that are are present on our, on our site. Hi, I'm Russell Reicheld. I'm I come from the Great Barrier Reef and I work with the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. Climate change uh, is affecting coral reefs around the world and the Great Barrier Reef is no exception. And we had about one in five of our corals did die last summer. Working with the World Heritage Centre, we've developed a long-term sustainability plan for the Barrier Reef. It's called our Reef 2050 Long-Term Sustainability Plan. And we had all of the partners, all of the governments, all of the industry groups, the non non-profits, the conservationists and the indigenous people, our traditional owners, we've all contributed into this plan. It's a 35 year look ahead to build the resilience of this beautiful World Heritage property. And that's a new thing and I'm pleased to be sharing that with the group here. If she had a number of the economic value of marine world heritage, that number would be staggering. What that less than 1% of the planet is generating in livelihood support, generating in economic growth, and providing jobs and food security, those numbers would be powerful and it would give a voice that this room needs. And, and, and I really challenge you to take that forward. My name is Carlos Godinez. I'm the director of uh, Cabo Pulmo National Park. We are in Santa Cruz Island, one of the beautiful islands of the archipelago of Galapagos. This afternoon we met uh, terrific work 
they're doing with educational program. And now we're in the Darwin Station. It's a mythic almost place. The problem that most of the marine protected areas face is the same in, in Baja, the overfishing. We share some issues that we can accomplish together. Uh, we can decide some of the indicators we share. We, we can work together to enforce and do better surveillance, but also monitoring this big, big and mobile species. I am Daniel Pauli. I'm um, a fishery scientist, a, fi a professor of fisheries at the University of British Columbia. The managers of these various sites exchange various information about, about their site. And one, one problem that uh, they all share is the danger of overfishing because fishing will remove the big fish, the sharks and so on. And they reduce the value for the tourists, a site that is not fished produce lots of fish and these fish leave the place and can be fished outside. The managers have to convince themselves first that it is so and then convince the community that, are, that live uh, in areas adjacent to this site that it is so as well. So my name is Martin Visbeck. I'm a professor at the Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research in Kiel, Germany. Marine areas uh, are part of the global system and as the climate is varying and changing due to human actions, the marine space is not exempt from that. So marine world heritage sites are uniquely positioned to be at the forefront of climate observing. By implementing an integrated ocean sustained observing system at those sites is a wonderful opportunity for understanding your local conditions your impacts can be documented and assessed and attributed to specific changes in the marine environment. So you can be leaders in global climate observations by installing these observing systems in partnership with other UNESCO efforts at your site. Hi, my name is Zach Abraham. I'm the director of global campaigns for WWF International. Well, the most important thing to remember is the world cares about world heritage and the solutions for solving some of the biggest challenges world heritage faces today isn't going to come from UNESCO alone. It's going to come from the power of UNESCO to bring together civil society, government, business to work together to find solutions. One of the most important things that each site should do is start to really look at the economic value this site provides. The inherent outstanding universal value is something we already understand, but governments need to also value the economics that come from these sites, the ecosystem services, and the pure money going into tourism, sustainable fishing, and all those other vital resources that serve to make these sites engines of economic growth. I'm uh, Jo Hiscock and I'm representing the New Zealand Subantarctic Islands. So we're on the island of Santa Cruz at Cerro Dragon and we've come ashore to look for the land iguanas. New Zealand hasn't been represented um, at these for the last two meetings so definitely I need to take home the brand, the message that, um, that the Subantarctic Islands are part of the World Heritage Site and that we can use that brand a whole lot more to help us uh, get some recognition for the islands.
Harald Marencic. I'm from the Wadensee, which is a, a mudflat area shared by Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands. I've again learned that all sides are different, but they're one in common. They have outstanding universal value. And that makes it so strong to work together, stay united, or you know, think about how can we make it better. I learned a lot about how to communicate our outstanding universal value to the public, to get all support from the public and the media. It's something we really have uh, once in a lifetime and, and to, together with other colleagues from the same, uh, same background uh, to discuss management. It was a huge, huge, uh, well, life-changing life experience to be here. Thank you.